welcome back to my class in the previous class we completed the discussion on the physical processing of the municipal solid waste and then started discussion on the volume reduction by combustion as a matter of fact this is nothing but a chemical processing technique i also told some of the authors call it as a chemical transformation method so volume reduction by incineration means we should understand what is incineration many times there is a confusion between the word incineration and combustion what is the key difference between these two terms we discussed in the previous class and also we discuss in detail a typical mass fired municipal solid waste incinerator with a line diagram and i have also given you the animation diagram of the same and i hope you have gone through that animation video and uh, things are very clear to you so after that we also discussed two important things the feasibility of the municipal solid waste to be used as a resource material for the incineration so three component diagram also we discuss which is very important and similarly three t's which play key role in the efficient working of a incineration obviously because this is a burning process or combustion process whenever solid waste is burnt remember this is a commingled solid waste not subject to major physical separation processes as it is collected maybe few of the biggest uh, bigger things can are removed otherwise it is as collected municipal solid waste only so obviously there are both combustible materials inside organic matter non combustible matter and all those things are there so whenever such things are burnt obviously there is a likely to be production of the pollutants so gaseous pollutants and solid pollutants gaseous pollutants coming through the flue gas and uh, ash and some other solid matter particulate matter and we also discuss how these are controlled in the uh, schematic diagram of course detailed discussion on the electrostatic precipitators scrubbers or fabric filters uh, we generally we discuss in the subject called air pollution control and uh, we should know you no know, as an engineer which are the pollutant removal and how the pollutants are removed generated through the municipal solid waste combustion process so so if i just will go back to the previous slides yeah we started two types of uh, residuals solid bottom ash and uh, flue gas emissions and next we discuss we shall start the discussion on the how the particular metals are removed so generally particulate matter very small size of particles are produced because of the incomplete combustion of the solid waste or physical entrainment of the non combustible materials in the process so all the fine particles i think this should have been a particle greater than 10 microns are controlled either by electrostatic precipitator or bag filter practically electrostatic precipitator is very costly process and as far as particulate matter concerned are generated during the municipal solid waste management i think bag filters are more than sufficient they are not only economical but also very efficient and thus i think is not comma actually these are preferred bag filters are preferred to control the particulate matter generated during the combustion of the commingled municipal solid waste next slide okay now there are various pollutants i told sulfur dioxide is there furans are there oxides of nitrogen are there then we shall discuss what are the various pollutants gaseous pollutant generated and in brief i'll be telling how they can be controlled so nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide 
collectively known, those are known as NOX, okay. Actually, this should, should have been capital X, okay. NOX, nitrogen oxides, okay. One is nitric oxide and nitrogen oxide, they are pollutant. So, obviously, these are produced during the combustion or burning of the municipal solid waste mainly because of the organic fraction of the waste containing mainly nitrogen. For example, the food waste containing nitrogenous matter will be responsible for the generation of the NOx. And another risk with this NOx is that they form pollutants further like ozone and peroxidal nitrate PAN through photochemical oxidation. They are also potential pollutants in the atmosphere. So, we have to control this. How to control? Very simple. One is source separation. Is always it is ideal technique. So as far as possible, if you can were able to identify, if the municipal solid waste is too much rich in the waste containing nitrogen, separate them. Some of the examples are like food waste, yard waste. So prior to the incineration is the best way. Okay. Instead of burning, these food and yard wastes can be used to recover fertilizer out of that which can be used for agricultural purpose. So, here you are avoiding the pollution due to oxides of nitrogen parallelly you can be using the same thing same pollutants or same components for recovering fertilizer instead of a fuel. So, that is also a best way and the source of separation of plastic some of the plastic also contain nitrogenous matter and wet scrubbers okay, of the flue gas where lime solution, dry scrubber and wet scrubber we call them in the air pollution. Wet scrubber also can be used having a lime solution. This neutralizes the acid gases. Thus, we are able to control not only uh, uh, oxides of nitrogen but also acid producing gases. So this is the way and we also I have also shown another way of reducing or controlling uh, oxides of nitrogen is the injection of the ammonia into the combustion chamber which will convert that into harmless nitrogenous gases. Acid gases. So, solid waste containing some fluorine and chlorine, some waste containing these kind of components emit the gases like hydrogen fluoride, this is capital C, hydrochloric acid, which are the sources responsible for emission of the flue gas containing fluorine and chlorine, not fluoride and chloride. Remember, they are fluorine and chlorine in as HF and HCl. Source are plastics in particular PVC, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene PS and polyethylene P. Okay? And sometimes these are also emitted depending upon the temperature and moisture content. They are also emitted as HF and HCl already have shown here. Okay? So, another mainly these are responsible for producing. They are also potential pollutants in the air. And combustion salts, municipal solid waste also produce nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide, okay, which combine with water droplets forming nitric acid and sulfuric acid. This is also quite possible in this along with an oxide is of course, it, uh, this one is a oxide of a nitrogen that is nitrogen dioxide. This also may escape along with a flue gas along with sulfuric acid, uh, sulfur dioxide and when this combine with the moisture content present in the atmosphere that convert, gets converted into nitric and sulfuric acid. How to control these gases? I told about these two controlling methods. Okay. 
and uh, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. These are also produced due to incomplete combustion which may happen because of too much loading, overloading of the furnace or insufficient temperature caused by the moisture content. That is why always the feasibility study of the municipal solid waste likely to be subjected to incineration process. The component diagram is very, very, three component diagram is very essential that decides the feasibility. The best way is use, use sufficient air is the only simple and best method to control or to minimize the production of the carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. In addition to this, you know, dioxins, you might have heard furons, volatile organic carbons, EOCs are highly toxic in nature. Volatile organic comp compounds, EOCs, presence of plastics, especially PVC, PVC, okay. POC, dioxins, furnace, they are highly toxic because of the presence of plastic and lesser temperature. So, the best way of to minimize the, that the temperature is not less than 980 degrees Celsius. So, 1000, you can remember 1000 degrees Celsius is fine, an ideal kind of for most of the Indian condition. That is how we control dioxins, furons and VOCs which are highly toxic. If it's inhaled, they may lead to some health problems. I am sorry, this is again a mistake. This is heavy metals. I am sorry. So, many of the products, you know, will contain heavy metals. Okay. So, some of the heavy metals which are present in many of the products that uh, items what we use uh, in day to day life, the capital C this is, cadmium is there, chromium is there, mercury is there, lead is there. They are emitted either as a particular matter or they may be vaporized into air depending upon the conditions the way the incinerator is monitored. Again, these are chief cult culprits. Okay. These dry cell batteries, plastics and flashlight batteries, okay, whichever we throw, you know, into the municipal solid waste, they are mainly responsible or they will be containing different types of heavy metals. Okay, some of the even TV accessories also they contain electronic wares also they contain a lot of heavy metals. So, it is quite likely that some of the electronic items e-waste management is separate topic of course as you know. Uh, they may enter some of the materials we may throw as uh, damaged you know some of the particles, uh, batteries, plastic, uh, flashlight batteries all those things from the commercial establishment or institutional establishment, they may enter into the municipal solid waste and they will be containing heavy metals and if they heavy metals are very, very dangerous. Okay. So, best is again source separation. Batteries and all that you should not allow. If you find that batteries are there and plastic heavy metals are there and the flashlight batteries are there, try to remove in the beginning itself. So, you can avoid the heavy metal emissions. Yeah. Thus, I think uh, the discussion on the combustion part or incineration of the municipal solid waste or volume reduction by municipal uh, by incineration process, we are coming to an end. And uh, before uh, telling about the uh, these YouTubes, I was referring about the two types of combustors. One is mass fired incinerator 
another one is rdf fired fired combustion whatever we discuss the most popular one is mass fired mass fired combustible process mass means nothing is separated in the commingled solid waste or nothing is subjected to the processing technique whereas rdf fired is refuse refuse derived fuels okay organic fraction of the municipal solid waste may can be converted into a compact densified uh, cubes or pallets or bales something like that containing a lot of energy contenting material okay so that is very specific uh, auxiliary fuel sometimes densified rdf we use as a auxiliary fuel that is very pure technique and uh, uh, this uh, is uh, not economical particularly for municipal solid waste management and thus mass fired uh, you know combustion or incineration is very popular and uh, you have to study that in detail so um, this completes uh, the discussion on the processing of the municipal solid waste and that too it completes the discussion on the module 2 and uh, i hope you are aware of the importance of uh, already because uh, you have studied uh, different modules and all that and uh, this processing technique so i mean times you may feel that i am repeating but when during the evaluation and all that no uh, when writing the answers and all that lot of confusion is there among the students so you should uh, read them properly listen to these videos and i will give you exhaustive notes along with this and uh, if you refer some of the videos and my notes you know definitely it will be more than enough from the examination point of view i have gone through the various previous question papers also and uh, i have covered entire without leaving a single part in the module 2 okay and notes also i will be giving which uh, i personally feel that will be quite useful for us so this completes the discussion on the processing techniques only physical processing we are completing complete in the module 2 chemical processing is only we have discussed here combustion process or incineration process there are some other processes like destructive distillation and uh, pyrolysis like that which you will be studying in the other modules okay so that completes the discussion on the module 2 and uh, once again i would like to acknowledge at this point of time the youtube because i have collected some of the important videos to create environmental awareness among the masses only few i have given here and definitely you listen to them or watch them very carefully and you will realize that how serious is the environmental issues i'd like to explain uh, why we are going to be talking about garbage and what each of us can do about it i asked how many of you have suffered from drought flood or unseasonal weather in the last year or two i asked how many have had a family member absent from work or from school because of tummy upsets fly born illness yes that's what we can all prevent by every single one of us doing a very small and simple thing don't chuck plastic in your food waste that you discard and preferably don't discard your food waste tied in a plastic bag uh the reason is that it's all ending up in mountains of 
uh, garbage, which you can see outside every one of our 6,000 urban local bodies, cities and towns. And it was not always like this. From Vedic times till the, the 1980s, uh, food waste from villages would be given to animals, domestic animals, and what was left over ended up in the fields to enrich the soil. Even urban food wastes were collected by farmers when they brought their produce to town. They would empty all the street bins of uh, food wastes because there was no plastic at that time and take it to their farms from composting. Only in the 90s when plastic mostly carry bags entered our lives and we began chucking the plastic out into the food waste and out mixed together. This became unusable by the farmers because the uh, plastic wouldn't allow the rain go in, to go in or the seeds to germinate through. So uh, it became an unwanted waste and uh, the cities didn't know what to do with it, so they just moved it outside their city limit and started building their waste dumps higher and higher. Now when these uh, waste needs air and oxygen to decompose nicely, like leaves on a forest floor, if you have airless heaps, uh, you will end up like a rotten tomato in a plastic bag instead of drying in the sun, in the open. So it generates leachate, a stinky black liquid, which goes into the groundwater and pollutes even bore wells for uh, several kilometers around for as long as 30 or 40 years. It also produces airless smelly gases like ammonia, urinal smell, and hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell, which is a huge problem for the villagers around. And these smells also attract thousands of flies, which are also a huge problem for everybody. And worst of all, when it, there are airless heaps it generate the waste decomposes not to water vapor and carbon dioxide, but it decomposes to methane, which is a greenhouse gas causing our erratic climate. And all this is just because we were chucking plastic into our food waste. Now, uh, if we can prevent that, we can prevent creating new airless hills because then the food waste can be composted as before. Uh, but what are we to do about the hills of waste which we already have? I'd like to uh, explain how that is done. The big heaps are sliced by earth movers front, back and across the top to create deep slices where the air can go in and the leachate can flow out, uh, which is stored in the heap. We'll watch the video now. Uh, this is a video of uh, Guru Gram Faridabad's dumping ground, where just three years of uh, waste was piled 25 lakh tons of it, 100 feet high, covering 15 acres. The entire site was covered in leachate, which was treated first. Floating waste was manually removed with rakes. After the waste was completely cleared, Ragini's special leachate treatment biocultures were dripped into all the leachate pools. This is where bioculture is being dripped into huge pools of leachate uh, and aeration is needed for the microbes. Here we see 
the mountain of waste being brought down in steps into terraces. was pulled down to form step-like levels called terraces. And uh, then deep cuts are slashed in the sides of the trench and across the top so that we end up with uh, well aerated slices is necessary of waste uh, and uh, these are what are called windrows where the breeze can blow through parallel uh, heaps and this is how the mountain was left after 10 months thanks to ragini jain and her biocultures. This really did not require a tender, did not require any additional expense because the amount of uh, earth moving equipment that was used to raise the waste higher and higher up to 100 feet, a half of that equipment was required to form these parallel windrows and turn them once or twice a week for a month. That brought down the moisture content of the waste by 40% from 65 to 25. Brought down the volume of the waste by 40%. So there was place for creating windrows of fresh waste. And now these stabilized windrows which released no more methane, leachate or smell or attracted flies uh, were ready for screening. When the screening is done not of rotted waste, which is just mining of a heap, if it's done on bio-treated, bio-stabilized waste, bio-remediated, then it is called bio-mining. And we get different fractions. The finest fraction is like tea powder, minus four millimeters. It's half soil and half organics. So we call it bio-earth and it's eagerly taken away free by farmers to enrich their soil. The coarsest fraction is plus 80 millimeter. This is mostly waste cloth, coconut shells and other combustible things, which is all raw material for RDF, which means refuse derived fuel. Uh, if you put a heavy blower fan that blows all the light plastic out as the waste is falling and you get two middle fractions, medium coarse and medium fine, which are mostly inerts. And the uh, Ghazipur mountain in Delhi uh, is planning to send some of this for trial as the embankment, the lowest layer of the National Highway 24 from Delhi to Meerut. So that when all the waste is moved off site, hardly 10 or 15% will be left behind. That can be spread over the whole area. It raises the ground level by half a meter or a meter. And the place is then available for long-term, almost lifetime use again for waste processing. But it's important that the fresh waste which comes, and preferably from all of you now, without plastic in the food waste, uh, but even mixed waste, can be formed, even the fresh waste, into windrows, two meters, max 2.5 meters high, sprayed with composting biocultures to speed up the process. And uh, if it is pure wet waste, all of it can go for fields, the fine one, or orchards, the medium one, or forest mulch and reclaiming uh, salt affected soils and uh, mining overburden, revegetation. So almost nothing is left behind at the end. And this is how we can help our whole global family and us. It's the fastest way. Uh, most uh, cost-effective uh, and simple for India to meet its climate change obligations to reduce methane. Thank you.
हमेशा कुर्सी पर बैठने वाले और एक अजीबो गरीब बीमारी से पीड़ित स्टीफन हॉकिंस आज के समय में दुनिया के सबसे बड़े वैज्ञानिक हैं। ब्रह्मांड की कई खोज में उन्हें सफलता मिली है इसीलिए साइंस की दुनिया उनकी हर बात को गंभीरता से लेती है चौबीस दिसम्बर दो में यानी कुछ दिन पहले चाइना के बेजिंग शहर में स्टीफन हॉकिंस ने एक और भविष्यवाणी की कि हमारी पृथ्वी अगले छह सौ छालों में एक आग का गोला बन जाएगी यह सब कैसे होगा क्यों होगा किस वजह से होगा और इसे कैसे रोका जा सकता है इस पर उन्होंने डिटेल्स में बताया था जो आज हम आपको इस वीडियो के जरिए बताएंगे सब्सक्राइब कीजिए हमारे इंटरेस्टिंग टॉप टेन इन हिंदी चैनल को और बेल आइकन को दबाइए ताकि हमारा हर नया वीडियो आपको सबसे पहले मिले तो स्टीफन हॉकिंस ने कुछ इस तरह से भविष्यवाणी की कि धरती साल छब्बीस तक एक आग का गोला बन जाएगी और इसकी वजह आप जानते हैं हम सब हैं इंसानी प्रजाति की वजह से यह सब होगा और उन्होंने ये भी स्पष्ट कहा है कि धरती पर आबादी बढ़ रही है और लोगों की जरूरियात भी हर दिन बढ़ती चली जाती है इसके कारण धरती अगले छह सालों में एक गर्म आग का गोला बन जाएगी और पहले की बात करें तो साइंस के अनुसार भी पहले धरती आग का गोला ही तो थी उन्होंने इसका उपाय भी बताया है कि कैसे इससे बचा जाए लेकिन वो बहुत ही मुश्किल है स्टीफन हॉकिंस ने कहा है कि इसके लिए इंसानी प्रजाति जहाँ पर पहले कभी नहीं गई वहाँ पर उस दिशा में हमें जाना पड़ेगा यानी हमें उस जमीन पर अपने पैर रखने हैं जिसकी खोज अभी तक हुई ही नहीं है हॉकिंस ने दुनिया के बड़े बड़े उद्योगपतियों से दरखास्त की है कि अपने पैसे वे स्पेस एक्सप्लोरेशन के पीछे खर्च करें और ब्रह्मांड में हमारे नजदीकी सितारों तक किस तरह से जा सके उसकी शुरुआत करनी चाहिए आज के समय में दुनिया जिसके पीछे भाग रही है वो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस यानी रोबोट टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में हॉकिंस ने बताया की यह धरती के लिए बहुत ही विनाशकारी साबित हो सकता है अगर उसका ठीक से यूज नहीं किया तो जब कोई मशीन इंसान की तरह अपनी बुद्धि का यूज करे तो उस मशीन को आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस कहते हैं क्योंकि आप इस बात का इनकार नहीं कर सकते जिस तरह से इंसानों ने कंप्यूटर बनाए आज वही कंप्यूटर इंसानों पर हावी हो गए फिलहाल इसकी शुरुआत हो गई है लेकिन आने वाले समय में कंप्यूटर पूरी तरह से हावी हो जाएंगे कुछ इसी तरह से आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस भी वही करेगा और पूरी धरती पर हावी हो जाएगा यानी मानव जाति को जिंदा रहना है तो उसे दूसरे सितारों का रास्ता खोजना पड़ेगा ये कहना है स्टीफन हॉकिंस का उसके अलावा साइंस के पास एक और रास्ता है टेरा फॉर्मिंग का इसका मतलब है कि किसी दूसरे ग्रह पर हुबहू और एक धरती बनाना तो क्या ये पॉसिबल है मेरा मतलब क्या हम टेरा फॉर्मिंग करके दूसरी धरती बना सकते हैं Thank you very much. Hi, Al. Thank you so much for being here. Well, so just as I mentioned, you gave a rousing talk at Climate Countdown last fall about all of the things that we need to do to transform uh, this, the, uh, transform climate change, and to turn things around here. What would you say is the state of play with climate action now, six months later? Well, thanks in part to many of the people that are part of the TED community. We've seen tremendous progress in the development of affordable, cheap. Solar electricity, wind electricity, electric vehicles, batteries, regenerative agriculture, green hydrogen is coming along, sustainable forestry. But unfortunately, the crisis is getting much worse, much faster than predicted, and it is getting worse at a rate faster than the rate at which we're deploying these solutions. We have everything we need. Save sufficient political will. It's been that way for a while, uh, and just since the Glasgow uh, conference, we have seen a lot of backsliding, and we've seen financial institutions, uh, banks, and large investors pumping more and more and more money into more and more fossil fuels. It is quite literally insane. Mm. Today we will put. Another 162 million tons into the thin shell of atmosphere surrounding the planet,、uh, and the accumulated amount now traps as much extra heat as would be released by 600,000 Hiroshima-class atomic bombs exploding every 24 hours.、Uh, just you know, 95 miles northeast of here. 
uh, in Lytton, British Columbia, it reached 121.3 degrees less than a year ago, wow. uh, 49.6 uh, Celsius. More than 80 all-time high temperature records were broken here in British Columbia just in less than a, a year ago. And one day later, by the way, the entire town burned up. Uh, yesterday, massive death in the Philippines from another superstorm fueled by the climate crisis. Chile just yesterday declared a drought uh, emergency. Uh, but we are seeing the development of the solutions. Unfortunately, the, the financial interests, the fossil fuel companies, have captured the policymaking process in key countries and have intentionally zombified as many people as they can around the world with false messaging that they knew was false. Mm. They knew it, it's been proven to a fairly well. Uh, and as a consequence, our political decision-making process in key countries is locked, paralyzed. So the political will necessary to break through this has to be expressed in a much more effective way. We are nearing a political event horizon. Uh, and in the United States, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Citi, Wells Fargo, uh, uh, others, uh, Bank of America, Royal Bank of Canada here, uh, the, uh, several banks in Canada joined the Net Zero Banking Alliance, and then last year they doubled the amount of money pumped into the tar sands, which is the dirtiest form of fossil fuels. You know, you know when junkies uh, uh, can't use the veins in their arms and legs anymore, they shoot between their toes. That's what the tar sands uh, is like. So I, I want to say that this is a moment when we have to rise to this occasion. Abraham Lincoln uh, uh, said the occasion is piled with difficulty piled high with difficulty, and we have to rise with the occasion. As our case is new, we must think anew and act anew. We have to find ways to solve the democracy crisis in order to solve the climate crisis. Well, you know, I think with the war in Ukraine, we're now seeing the question of energy security being brought center stage, and I'm curious what you think that will do in terms of accelerating or decelerating the transition, the energy transition? Yeah, well, this should be a moment of global epiphany. This is a fossil fuel war, as many have said. And the timidity of some European countries, understandably because they are so dependent on Russian gas and oil, is a res another consequence of our dependence. And then we see this uh, horrible scene where uh, the United States goes begging other petro-states like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela uh, and Iran to pump up uh, more and more fossil fuels. We should see this as a threat to national security and global security. It is a threat to a disadvantaged communities. I mean, the, the co-pollution from burning fossil fuels kills 9 million people every year. A, a large multiple of the number of people killed by COVID are killed annually by the particulate pollution that comes from fossil fuels. We can save money. We can fight inflation, by the way. Uh, the sustainability revolution, including renewable energy, is massively deflationary. The cost continues to go down. There are multiple reasons why we should see this as a moment of decision to make a big change and get off of fossil fuels. We can't keep pumping more and more money in pursuit of short-term profit in activities that are destroying the future of humanity. This is not a time for moral cowardice. This is not a time for surrender uh, and reckless indifference to the fate of humanity. Mm. Well, I mean, I think in thinking about this being a time for change, the IPCC recently put out a report where they said that if we do want to make a, a come around the bend, that we have until 2025 to see CO2 levels peak. I mean, that's just three years from now. How realistic do you think that actually well, is? Well, actually, what they said, it needs to peak between 2020 and 20, and no later than 2025. Yes. First, let me 
share some good news from that dire IPCC report. They also said, if we reach net zero, true net zero, then the temperatures on our planet will stop going up in, with a lag of as little as three to five years. And if we stay at net zero, half of the human-caused CO2 in the atmosphere will fall out of the atmosphere in as little as 25 to 30 years. We have the technologies, we have the solutions, we have the ability to stop this progressive destruction of the future of humanity and start the long healing process. But we have to break through the capture of our political systems. Do, should, they say boycotts don't work. Should we boycott all of these banks and all of these financial institutions? Uh, should, you know, scientists, climate scientists, some of them announced last week and started doing this, gluing themselves to the to, to the doors, uh, to the gates of these fossil fuels uh, facilities. Uh, if climate scientists have reached the conclusion that more facts and more data and more research is of absolutely no good unless we, the people, can find the means to break through the imprisonment of our self-determination on the part of large, massive polluters who are just looking at profits, then the scientists say they have to go into the streets. Mm. So, uh, I, I'm sorry to get all hot wow. and, 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 and charged <laughs> up about this. I think everyone appreciates it. I think everyone appreciates it. But yes, what the, what the IPCC report, I mean, you know, it's an asymptotic curve that gets closer and closer to absolute panic, okay? Uh, and all the reports are very similar. Uh, this is real. You know, Voltaire once said, if you can convince people of absurdities, you can convince them to commit atrocities. We are seeing that in Ukraine today. We are seeing that on a global basis with this reckless indifference to the future of humanity. What will we say to the next generations when they look back and say, you had the chance to do this? We have the means. The, IE, the International Energy Agency says that in order to cut emissions by 50% uh, in, in 2030, we have all of the technologies we need, fully developed with deployment plans that have been proven to work. For the next 50%, between 2030 and 2050, all of the technologies are in various stages of development. They can be ready if we decide to to develop them quickly enough, they will be ready. We have to stop destroying our future. It sounds so simple, but we have to break through this paralysis. Well, we have to break through this paralysis, ladies and gentlemen. Al uh, Gore. I have one other thing to say, oh, sure. and I've said this before. Do not give up hope, and remember always that political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you. Dear students, I would like to spend a few minutes because I told in one of the classes, wherever I go, whatever environmental subject I teach, whether it is water supply engineering, municipal waste water treatment engineering, and for MTech I also teach salt waste management, I teach waste water treatment, industrial waste water treatment. So wherever I get an opportunity to teach environmental subject, I never forget certain things to tell my students that this environmental issue is everybody's issue, not civil engineering issue or environmental issue. Each and every citizen of the, each and every person of the entire globe, you know, the awareness is required. So you can watch these YouTubes. One I, YouTube, a brief YouTube, I told in one of the classes, is related to Stephen Hawking, who is considered over the modern Einstein, who recently died, his warning and I told his prediction that maximum the earth may last for 600 years and it is likely to get converted into sizzling fireball leading to the total extinction of the human race itself. In fact, he goes further and says that better you look for 
because you are not taking seriously the environmental issues. So he has uh, even advised all the multi-billionaires in the world to invest in the research to identify a planet which can be suitable for the human living. That is one. You should never forget. Another one person whom you should not forget is Al Gore, former Vice President of United States of America. He is a very hardcore environmentalist and his video film is there also, also his book is there. I sincerely request you to watch that video and inconvenient truth. Manava Jananga, Vappala Aranta, Rishukola Aranta, Parishar the Satya Ida, Tumba Chana Gire, one the brief Nano video quoted in it to create a seriousness and definitely in a free that is not lay a big. Andre, you will get an idea. That is uh, one thing. Stephen Hawking's Al Gore. Yeah, one more video is um, regarding Madam Almitra Patel. You are the another salt waste management to Namadesh Dali, Istondo, Gambir Vagi Padangal Stayare, Central Government to Kota Swachabarata. Another major serious sagi, mandatory Agidre, it is mainly because of the Almitra Patel, Madam Almitra Patel. Auriga, maybe Madam, maybe more than 85 years old. You watch into the video how old she is and how active she is. I am lucky enough uh, to listen to her speech in the year 2000, uh, 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 that is 1999 when I was doing my PhD at IIT Madras. There was an international conference on the solid waste management and keynote address was given by Madam Almitra Patel and uh, definitely you look into her profile. She is a Supreme Court lawyer and she went to Supreme Court as a public interest litigation and she explained the hazards or the kind of a problem created because of solid waste, indiscriminate disposal of solid waste in, in the Indian uh, society. And finally, that her argument culminated into enactment of solid waste management tools and regulations, which came into effect from 2000. So, you more Janan Maribardo, Abro Stephen Hawking's Al Gore, climate change, Madam. Almitra Patel, your jeteke, inno bro, Kannada vadaure adanta, Professor Nagesh Hegade, our one the pustaka ide, iruvad vande bhumi, compulsory, a pustaka vannu niuvadle ebik, umba chenna ke bardhi dare, matto recent aage, i namma Akashwani, Karnataka daka. Durdarshan, Durdarshan, or the more than one hour on the discussion in the last June 5, 2022 theme was uh, only one earth. Nana Tevalakya Prakara, Yavatianadur Namadesh Dali, Atyanta Suttavadanta, Authority on Pollution Andre, Professor Nagesh Hagade. With due respect to all the scientists and all that, our us to samagravagi parisara vagge knowledge idhar thumba karme. Adu kora we are so lucky that he is he is able to explain everything environmental issues in pakka. Allaru artha gwanta kanna dalle artha gwanta riti lau <laughs> riti dare. Iru dondhe bhumi aur don pustka mat aur dondhe lacharu. Aur recent ke last year bagal kote ke bande dro I was lucky enough to interact with him. So. He is an authority on the environmental pollution aspect, water pollution. Basically, he is a geologist. He did a PhD from IIT Kharagpur and worked tremendously. He is a related person. He is a person who is a person who is a person who is an inconvenient truth. This is my sincere request for all the students to search various articles, various speeches, various videos of these great environmentalists who are struggling hard for the protection of the environment. <coughs> so,
ಸೊ ಕೊನೆಗೆ ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಗೆ ನಾನು ಏನು ಹೇಳಬೇಕಂತಂದರೆ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗೇಮ್ ಇರುವುದು ಒಂದೇ ಭೂಮಿ ಸರ್ಕಾರನೂ ಕೂಡ ಎಲ್ಲನೂ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಫ್ರ ಲೈಫ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ಅಲ್ಗೋರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡೇ ಟು ಡೇ ಲೈಫ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ನಾವು ಈ ಪರಿಸರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಬೆಳೆಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಎಲ್ಲ ಥರದ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಜನ್ರೇಷನ್ ನಾವೇ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಚ್ಛಾಶಕ್ತಿನೂ ಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತು ರಾಜಕೀಯ ಇಚ್ಛಾಶಕ್ತಿ ಕೊರತೆಯೂ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತು ಡಿಫಾರೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ತುಂಬ ವೆರಿ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ ನಮ್ಮ ವಿನಾಶಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವೇ ಕಾಣ್ರಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಗ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ತುಂಬ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾವು ಇನ್ನೂ ಡೆವಲಪಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಇದೆ ವಿ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಅ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ನಾ ದೇವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನು ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಈ ಏನೋ ವಾಟರ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇದ್ದಿದ್ರಿಂದ ನಾವು ಮಿನರಲ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಥವಾ ಪೋರ್ಟೇಬಲ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ನನಗೆ ಬಾ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ದೆಹಲಿ ಇಂಥ ಊರಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದಾಗ ದ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಏರ್ ಪೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೇ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ದ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಸಿಲಿಂಡರ್ ಏ ನಾನು ಭಾಳ ತುಂಬ ಮುಂದುವರ್ತ ದೇಶದವನು ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಸಿಲಿಂಡರ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಇನ್ನೇಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂಥ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಬಾರದು ಅಂದರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಪರಿಸರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಬೆಳೆಸಿಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಪರಿಸರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞೆ ಪರಿಸರಿಸಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತು ನಾವು ಕೂಡ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಿಮಮ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಬೇರೆಯವರಿಗೆ ಮಾದರಿ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಐ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಈ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಗಿವನ್ ಮೇನ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಮೈ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು